Hi, I'm Dr. Mark Proctor, and I'd like to talk to you about a condition called cranial synostosis. It's very scary to hear that your child may have a congenital problem of the skull bones, meaning a problem of the skull bones that the child was born with. And indeed, cranial synostosis can be a serious medical condition, but one that we can very successfully treat. When a child is born, normally all of the bones of the skull are open, and this allows for the rapid growth of the skull we see in the first year of life. In one in about every 2,000 children, two of the bones are going to close too early, and this is what we call cranial synostosis. The most common two bones to close too early are these bones, called the parietal bones, and if we get a fusion of this area, it's called sagittal synostosis. Here in a skull, we see the condition called sagittal synostosis. And what happens is once this bone closes off, the brain can't push the bones out in that direction, and the skull becomes elongated and narrow. After sagittal synostosis, the next most common bone to close would be called the coronal synostosis, where the frontal bone here fuses to the parietal bone here. As we see here in a model, in this case, the coronal suture has closed on the right side of the infant, and we can't get the normal growth in this direction, leading to the flat area here in the front of the child's head. Some other features that you might notice on your child is that the nose tilts over towards the suture that is fused, and the ear may also be advanced on that side. In some children, we don't get just one coronal suture closing. We can have both coronal sutures close, and that's called bilateral coronal synostosis. In this model here of bilateral coronal synostosis, you can see that these bones have closed, and the head has trouble growing out in that direction, leading to that flattened appearance of the forehead. Another common suture to close is the metopic suture, which is over here. And in this case, the two frontal bones here and here fuse together. This is a model of metopic synostosis, and you can see the bone here is fused, and the forehead becomes very triangular in its forehead shape, something we call trigonocephaly. You should also note that not all cases in which this bone closes cause a problem that needs to be operated on. In some cases, children may have a little bit of a ridge, but a normal forehead shape, and we might not recommend any treatment at all. The last suture that may close is the suture here in the back called the lambdoid suture. I will want you to understand that that's very rare that that suture closes, and most of the time, if a child has some flatness in the back of the head, it's simply from the position they were sleeping in. To establish the diagnosis of synostosis, a lot of times a specialist can do it simply by looking at the child and examining the child's head, but sometimes we do need to get x-rays or a CAT scan, and in some cases even an MRI scan, to really be certain that the bone is closed and that the brain is okay. Depending on the age of your child at the diagnosis and what suture has fused, there are different treatment options for cranial synostosis. In the current era, we often use a minimally invasive surgery called endoscopic release of the suture, where we make small incisions, for instance, an incision like that, to remove a fused coronal suture, simply to open up the suture and allow the brain to grow. In cases of endoscopic surgery, once we've opened the suture, we then use a helmet to achieve the correction of the shape. The helmet simply shields the flat area and allows the brain to grow back out into the area where it had been previously restricted. If the suture fusion is more complex, such that multiple sutures are fused, which can happen, or if the child's a little older, past about four or five months of age, we may recommend a bigger operation where we make an incision that goes over the top of the head and allows us to open up the skull bones and move them into a correct position. This operation is almost always done in conjunction with our plastic surgery colleagues, such that it's a neurosurgeon and plastic surgeon working together. Why does your child need treatment for synostosis? There are two major concerns. One is the cosmetic effects of not treating it, and generally it will get a little bit worse over the first year of life. And the second concern is that approximately between 5 and 30 percent of children whose skull bones remain closed will end up with inadequate room for the brain as they get older. Therefore, we do think it's very important for you to see a specialist if there is a concern for synostosis. Here at Children's Hospital, we have many specialists in neurosurgery and plastic surgery who can help treat your child with synostosis, 
and we'd encourage you to either call or go through our website to request an appointment. Thank you.